Yeah. You just take. Take for not well. I mean, D I mean, is, is set. If D is not too small, small, small. I mean, no, but when S is F I'm yeah. Right. So not all F and reflections need a point, so we cannot just take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all kind of if D is large enough, D is an approximate number, then all finite type J's are. All right. Uh, let me explain how to go uh, from answer to question two. Answer to question <coughs> one. Um, um, so I actually, what I want to do, I want to recover this O epsilon theta from the, uh, from the Verma model. So the way how it works is the following. I'm going to define two subcategories. I'm going to define the category T sub zero. That's a full subcategory in DD O epsilon theta. Of object with the following property. Uh, that form in DD or epsilon theta uh, from delta epsilon lambda by i x is zero for all lambda in theta and i uh, bigger equal to zero. So I had a long time, uh, I had a long time having trouble uh, figuring which direction the ship is. Uh, so here is a rule to remember. You know, we are in academia, and in academia, we always thought by default ship is the left. <laughs> well, that's ship to the left. So it's a guy without, uh, without uh, positive quantum. Now I can define for you t less or equal than zero. Uh, and uh, this is all y's in dB or epsilon theta uh, such that form in the category from y to x is equal to zero uh, for all x in t. So these are two full subcategories. In fact, this are this are parts of the usual T structure. And now an exercise the audience is to show uh, that O epsilon theta is the intersection of T less or equals than zero and uh, T bigger than zero with the Bible. And the hint is that every object in O epsilon theta admits a non zero homomorphism from a verb. And for all M in O epsilon theta, non uh, zero, uh, there is non zero form. Yeah, that's uh this is this is a this is a destruction more or less standard. Just a, it's just a peculiar way uh to describe it entirely in terms of permanent. So people who know how I create categories can ask, why do I need to do this peculiar thing? Uh, that's because the, the process of this type category is not bound. Just take complexes of Verma field with objects, you can introduce the problem. So this is true for arbitrary set of generators for categories of design. I can uniquely, well, I mean, I cannot define it, I can uniquely characterize it. Maybe is that, you know, if I take some of them, W. All right, so now I kind of refuse to answer in question two, and this is what I'm going to do for the remainder of the talk. 
And uh, this will require uh, one fairly classical construction. to do with reaction of the fine grade. Now, let me explain you a uh, uh, motivation. So what is it that I'm looking for? So, this quantum category O was from the very beginning defined as a category of grade modules somehow. Uh, graded by law. And so what I can do, I can shift uh, this grading by an element of D times lambda zero. So D was the order of the root of unity. So if I do this, then this gives me a self-equivalence of my category. So just change the grading and leave the action attached. If you look at the definition of the category, you see that it's an uh, is equivalent, in fact, of each individual block. Uh, which sends gamma to one. Varma is highest weight lambda to Varma is highest weight lambda plus whatever element I <laughs> And so my question is can I see this sim this categorical symmetry? So let me just let me just uh, let me just summarize by saying that the G lambda zero acts, or maybe I should just say the lambda zero acts. Then uh, I can just tell them that lambda zero acts for epsilon theta. And so once I have uh, I have my equivalence, uh, this group will also act on, on, on the target category by self equivalence. So can I see this action? The answer is yes, we can. Um, it gets a bit technically complicated. So I'm going to use a slightly different version of this category that I'm going to explain uh, in, in a couple of minutes. But first, let me uh, tell you what my final grade group is. So a final grade group. It will denote by BR for A uh, is generated uh, by elements uh, T sub S, where S is an S. So these are uh, affine simple reflections. And then we need mod to model out by relation. So what my relations are, we have the following form. Yes, times T sub T times T sub S <coughs> is equal to T sub T, T sub S, T sub T, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in each of these products, there is equal number of factors, uh, which I will call M sub ST, and this M sub ST. Is the order of the product, and this is for all as different from T uh, in the function. If this is an element of infinite order, <laughs> then the relation is just. I'm going to recall is a classical construction due to Rukia. Interestingly, it's only on archive, but I can see. Um, uh, and this kind of 
Kashan uh, is actually by, you know, is a Hamamorta, it's probably speaking Hamamorta from the from the brain group to the category of sorbid bimodules. Now, sorbid bimodules uh, are going to act not on this thing, but on H from the left. And from the right, you need to do a bit of a lot of algebra. I don't want to do it to Elia in the day of a lot of algebra. Instead, I'm going to modify my text. So what I'm going to do, I want the action of the affine gray group or a set of deformed version H is going to be so to say from zero. So let me explain what this deformed version is. Uh, remember, I had my uh, base ring called R. This is just a um, just symmetric algebra of the reflection representation of my book. We're going to consider its completion, R hat, to the inverse limit of N, so uh, symmetric algebra of V, which is R, modulo N's power of the augmentation. This is, an, uh, this is an algebra of formal powers. Uh, in particular, it's complete and local. And now I'm going to denote, and I'm going to define a suitable category we will call S beam hat, same hat as here. And so who is this? That's sort of a counterpart of ungraded sorbid modules, but for binary. Because for y modules, I could try to do the same thing as before, just consider the category of R y modules with grading forgotten, which is no good, because the ring R is not long. You know, you'll get just a lot of crap. Instead, I thought of consider a complete local version. I thought, ah, what is this? It's a, it's a full subcategory. Uh, of course, the following form. I can take my circuit y module and complete it. In fact, I have two ways to do it. I can change up from the left and from the right. But uh, all my modules here are finally generated as left and right modules, so it doesn't make <laughs> Same thing as R hat plant of the R beam. And so this leaves in R hat y modules, where B is an object opposite. So it's sort of similar to the definition of ungraded sorbid modules, uh, but instead of just hearing the right action of R, my transferring is just a one dimensional implementation portion, I complete. And then in this category, we still kind of talk about, you know, about both thermal servants and all the things. Um, and uh, the decomposable object are the same. Uh, and finally, we can uh, form our completed version of H. That's going to be KB. Completed solving by. So that's a deformed version of that. And one advantage of this due to over H is that it's, this is a monoidal case. Same compliance. And uh, I'm going to write the convolution fine instead of the time. Uh, question. Use the drop J. 
Yes, so uh, a little bit in general of trends there. Uh, I look not at Affine Taipei, but just that Taipei um, is all or in that case a local ring, and we just got the grading. No, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a, this works for, for, for any or such. Okay. Specifics of the Affine one will show. So, uh, one remark is about a formal connection between this H flat and H of Uh Just notice that I have uh, a functor we will call here. I have a functor going from, let me give it a name, let me call it evaluation at zero, goes from S being what on the line? That's what on the line. And for this, extends the y module B to B modular D. That's how I get from, from the y module to so. And of course, I have, I have a functor between additive categories, it extends to a functor between homotopy categories. That's my integration at zero, going from H to F. So now I promised you an action. <clears throat> um, so a good way to produce such an action is to prevail. I mean, that's a monoid of cash. We can talk about homomorphisms from this group to this monoid of cash. Again, I want to do it in the kind of, in the most basic fashion. So this is the result due to look here. Is that uh, there is a group homomorphism uh, from BR, BRA to where? Uh, to the group by the market of classes. Or convertible point. In H that convertible of course means with respect to the convolution operation. And uh, I don't need to tell you about the generators. So where does it go? We want to have a the complex, which I hope I didn't mess up. So the complex is like this. Well, I have some zeros. Then I have my R hat going to uh, both Samuelson for S. That comes on the S on that. Going to zero. <laughs> uh, where, let's see. Well, this would be a homomorphism of bimodes. <laughs> so it should send one to an element with a property <laughs> that uh, I come in with R cat. The element. No matter whether I multiply by an element of parquet in the left or on the right, it gets the same. So this is the right second element. So an element one to go to alpha s tends to one plus one times the alpha. Uh, leaving the case. Well, alpha is in the corresponding simple. And it's an easy exercise uh, to check that it's in, in this class uh, required. Now, uh, the, only thing that I, uh, the only thing that remains to tell you is which homological degrees do this guy sleep. Uh, I think the correct normalization is where well, this is uh, in degrees here. That's a basic tip. And let me give it a name for this homomorphism. Since it's due to look here, let me call it Johnny R. So what I've got 
is uh, an action of the five trade group on my uh, on this version of the text. It's an action of very, very big steps. I mean, it's well, I mean, you can, well, when you have a homomorphism of group to algebra, you can act this algebra from the left and from the right. You have two actions, and there will only be one. Action from the right. Uh, okay, uh, uh, and in this action, the unit goes to this and the. So now I can use this action to produce some objects in my category H hat and in my category H. And this object will be denoted by well the chap max gives me uh that. And delta sub x, which gives me h. And here x is an element the five one. So how do I do this? Uh, there is some uh, choice of sign involved. Um, know that once I have an element in WA, there is a canonical lift to the brain. <laughs> Namely, if I choose a reduced expression, like the forms of this L, uh, then this T sub X is the definition TS1, TS2, and so TS1. So I have such an element. And now my uh, delta fat. That is going to be the image under the Sophia's homomorphism of Tx minus 1 to minus 1. So usually this T sub x is correspond to so called core standard topics, and they need so called standard topics. And now, uh, how do I get uh, how do I get an object in H? Well, I evaluated zero. Delta x. Population of zero of delta shell. This is how long. It's actually this kind of this version. Uh, one remark to put this into some context. Uh, this remark is not going to be used before. Uh, I can take this object and play uh, the same game as I played in part 1.1. I could try to extract the Abelian category out of this. Delta axis. I can try. Uh, to produce uh, an Abelian subcategory. In fact, the part of a T-structure, let's say it, I want to produce a T-structure, uh, in my category H. So what is it that I get? That's a very nice answer. Um, in the constructible realization, so let me just write the symbols. I'm not going to explain. It's DB sub I0. <laughs> Well, well, it's a fine flat variety. But in some stock, uh, I zero is uh, uh, is a pretty important critical of evaporate. So I look at um, constructible complexes, homology of uh, constant nice orbits, and then uh, my abelian subcategory is going to be uh, the category of uh, Burgess. Like that is a Burgess system. And this delta sub x are uh, extensions by, by zero of uh, constant shifts on top. That's a, that's a sort of very natural object if you're interested in geometry. All right, are uh, there questions?
So let's get back to our original plan. How do we characterize uh, the images of variants? So I produce some objects here. They could ask whether this object could serve as a but also the answer is no. Um, so first of all, let's kind of see what our um, categorical symmetry from before, this easy categorical symmetry, could look like for uh, the category H map. So that's uh, the central part of this talk. Of lattices. Well, one lattice. And stability. So, of course, we have an embedding lambda zero, double with you for A, and it actually lifts the embedding from lambda zero to the five great rules in the following fashion. So, if I have, so it's unique. Like that, uh, for every lambda, lambda zero, which is dominant, in this case, is a plus. The lambda goes to element T sub T lambda. So there is something to check, that you need to check the existence. Uh, but then, uh, once you've done this, it's unique because uh, every element in the weight matches is the difference of the domain. And so let me introduce this notation. <coughs> um, I have mu in lambda zero. Then J sub mu uh, is going to be mode, well, uh, the image of mu in the fine So, what we can ask is whether if I act. Delta on, on the argument of delta hat by T mu. Right, get something isomorphic. Delta hat X. Evolution with J mu. And the answer is no in general. Also in general. But it's still true for some X and mu. Uh, lead into something that I call stabilization, which I'm going to explain uh, in a couple of minutes. So, why do I care about uh, this as a mode? That's sort of a counterpart of the statement that my action by lambda zero on this category is on square mass of one. So, this right wing evolution is sort of a counterpart of that action. And I ask whether these objects are uh, uh, well, they don't live in the right category, then can this, that's as you assume that I put them in the right category, can they serve as images of farmers? The answer is no. But I will now force them to. Uh, why do you need to compete to like the Bouquet complexes? I don't. I need to compete so that I deal with something like, like a local ring. You know, you, can you get away with graded I can I can put grading, but unfortunately my original category doesn't have a grade. So I need to degrade. Is that true if you assume mu is dominant? Uh, I will just try the condition on you, you know what? Uh, there is some. Okay. So here, here goes the condition. And uh, 
just uh, I just explain that you can see there are some notational choices involved, and some of them are standard, and some of them are less standard. Uh, but in any case, the observation is this. So if I have lambda and mu antidotment, uh, some w in w, uh, x equal w times p lambda, then uh, the length of x p sub times p sub mu is the length of x plus length of p mu. And from where you can deduce that uh, t minus 1 x t mu minus 1 uh, this uh, j minus mu is equal to t minus 1 of x minus And uh, this implies the term that delta hat at t minus mu <laughs> delta hat at j minus. So my homomorphism doesn't hold in general, it does hold in a certain degree. My notational convention. All right, so now, um, I mean, this observation I can define a new family of objects. Uh, and this is definition slash lemma. So, how is this object obtained? I translate. X by T minus mu argument, then I can go with J mu. And what this observation says is as long as mu is sufficiently anti dominant, what I get doesn't depend on the period of mu. So the thing stabilizes. Uh, technically, I can write it like this so for all X and W to the state, uh, there is a mu sub X. Uh, in lambda zero plus, such that delta hat at t minus mu convolution is mu doesn't depend uh, on mu for all mu equal equals in this new subject. That's civilization. Okay. Is a uh, so earlier we made that remark that delta hat of x t negative mu. So that mu there is anti-dominant. Did you do? So e is false in that. Wait, I'm just confused about the index here. The observation is for mu in negative, but like for mu anti-dominant. Yeah. So so but here mu is dominant. Mu x. Is in the definition slash oh, so This mu is dominant, but I have minus. So the rule is that I shift x to the then anti dominant region by doing this, and then I translate back by J. I think there's a sign error right above definition lambda. In the right, right above definition lemma, we have inserted a minus in front of the mu. No, right above, line above, to the left. No, I think this is correct. Well, because you want, you are applying it to the element x t mu, not x t minus mu. Line right below. Right at the beginning of the observation. People, it's impossible to give a two hours <laughs> in a minute talk without bringing up a side Origin of this question. So you're saying, like, in the, in the parentheses after the delta hat, 
like God. It should be X T W. Yeah. I see. Right there. Yep. And then he's just saying painting the sign. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then then there. Fine. <laughs> No, I'm just, uh, I didn't like some size. Uh, let me give this guy a name. <laughs> Delta super ST of X. The super ST means for stabilized. And the next exercise, of course, is they, uh, this object will satisfy uh, the required period. Now uh, for all possible. Okay. So I will give you a new family of objects, but it's not very different from, from the existing. Now we see is I can now produce uh, objects in my underform category just by evaluating at zero. So I define uh, delta super s of x evaluation by right? zero delta flat. And with this I can say the theorem. Calls for all three orbits. Let me just for simplicity state it for the principal law. So let me take um, uh, theta to be double to a dot zero. Then I have an equivalence from db for epsilon theta. To uh, the regular block of the Hunky category, standards of Verma with highest weight x minus 1 dot minus 2 rho. Minus 2 rho lies in the orbit of the Hunky To delta st for all that. So the size is where the worm must go. Uh, questions? Why minus two rows? So, um, in the usual equivalence between um, the regular block of category O and the parallel shift of the fine black variety, you want uh, anti dominant karma on the minus two rho to go to the skyscraper. Uh, of course, one can feast to uh, the space. Couldn't mix one with the, the usual wavy Verma module with the rest of the category. Because the sound is so different. They do uh, stable basis. That's All right. So uh, in the remaining five minutes, I need to explain you what happens with singular blocks, what happens with general. And for this notice, then, uh, this, this thing here, kind of singular block of uh, my Hecke category consisted of modules over R super J, which were just invariant. Well, it's invariant into R. 
And then gives you the restriction factor by some j from uh, S mod underline <coughs> to S mod underline. Okay, just restrict. Now, an observation that you can do, you can make, is that uh, for all W in the and the parabolic corresponding to J, uh, one has phi sub J delta W X isomorphic to uh, phi sub J delta X for all X and W. So how to think about this observation? Well, uh, in the usual BGG category O, have functors of translation to a wall. The wall is given by some standard parabolic in the level. And if we have two verbs whose labels are conjugate by government of the standard parabolic, the image of some of the translation functor are the same. And so this is kind of this is this this functor of translation to the wall, and this is some kind of verbal. And now you can use this for this observation. And uh, it's to the same property for the stabilizer. Well, to define stabilized guys, I first deformed, uh, but this is still true in the deformed category. So I uh, show the phi j delta stabilized. X, the isomorphic to phi j, delta stabilized. And these are the images of the vermis in the single. The theorem, and that's, that's the last theorem for the touchy part. I'm trying to have the equivalence. Uh, which is maybe OS1 theta and H of J, uh, which sends delta epsilon x minus 1 y to minus 2 rho to the spy J delta stabilized to x for all x. And so this answer finally is the original question that I posted. And that's it. But we do the uh, just a regular form of what you'll uh, go back to. Sorry. In, in, in this thing, the, the regular Roman module, module, where do they go back to in DB commits? Uh, they go to some objects which don't really have a meaning inside of the category. They have a meaning inside of the category. And the Y modules, be careful with the deal with, but it's a equivalent category, all as usual. Did you say that that old mix, you know, was equivalent to some category of partial under my module that motivation sometimes? Like G thirty? I don't recall. Okay. I think that's how you're young. <laughs> Are there other questions? You have a good way of going back the other way and going from categories H and H hat and looking for it, inverse image and post theta of things like Bouquet complex or categorized projectors and like this. So, um,
to see if what I'm saying is correct. I kind of this is kind of depend. What you can always do, so I have the Z monoidal one. H pat acts on the on the category on the is on the right of the local category O category O from the left. <coughs> you can you can say what it actually is, and as usual, this is action by projection. Where do you want this take theta into zero? Uh takes theta to be any free orbit. For example, the orbit of zero D is bigger than that. And um uh, easy to say that it will give you this direct equivalence once you have one of the second one of the right second. Priori going back is always easy. I don't know how to use it in the fire. Can you briefly say what happens on the comparing side? Where does delta? Right, so what happens on the coherent side is the following. Uh, uh, there is a non commutative stringer. And that's a good, good notation for how the system gives you a meeting. Uh, Algebra over, let's say, um, P of T. Yeah. Now you have this category. Have a uh, Y, which is a string resolution. That's called G phi star. Okay. That's, this is equivalent to the theta simply three. Oh, I don't need to be it. And then You know, this, this, this algebra lacks the language to, re, to say where Varma goes in a nice way. Um, but uh, in any case, the equivalence is this. Here are the final thing. So, such an equivalence exists for some singular groups, namely this uh, singularity consists of finite type groups. But, uh, uh, fine type groups are more tricky, although they can be kind of nice. I mean, just basically, if you understand it, it's just. Here, um, E is decoded in A somehow. Uh, so, for any free orbit, that's it. So, the, the D only, uh, so, 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 let's think about this as the following. So, you have a collection of blocks labeled by the singular group. So, this is a priori, is whatever finite type uh, subsystem in this. And then D only tells you how many of which blocks you are going to take on the full category. The blocks do not depend on. Of the encoded geometry. E is not encoded in it. Theft of this, you know, theft of this from the number. Which are rather is not taken. That's asking how the orbit appears on the left side. The order of epsilon star, yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. When the walls are connected by under the area, my walls will be. Some of evil ones, which is something very, very nice. Right. So, 
stop translating words. If I start some translation task. Are there any further questions or comments? If not, I think we should thank Ivan for his entire. <laughs> We're going to resume in nine minutes, 9.35.